9-11. Now we move on to a report that was funded by the World Health Organization, which claims that young people who use e-cigarettes are more likely to take up smoking. Now, more than half of the world's population are exposed to tobacco products with graphic health warnings. Uh, the H WHO are calling for harsher restrictions on vaping. Uh, with smaller and um, similar health warnings on tobacco. So to have similar warnings, uh, what are your thoughts? Do you vape? Joining me now is public health com commentator and UK lead for Young Voices, Jason Reid. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for joining me. Um, so talk to me, do you vape? Do you smoke? I don't vape and I don't smoke, but I think people should have the freedom to do that if they want to. And I don't buy into this narrative that the World Health Organization is pushing. They've been campaigning against vaping for a very long time and very conveniently they've now come out with a report which um, produces a load of science which goes against all the science that we already had which supports their political agenda. There's no causal link at all between vaping and smoking. In fact it goes the other way around. The data that we have, all the data that we have, shows that vaping is the most effective tool for helping people quit smoking. Mm -hmm. It's much more effective than nicotine patches or than going cold turkey. It works in about three quarters of cases. And so if the World Health Organization wants us to move on from smoking, which it does because this is part of its tobacco-free initiative, as it calls it, it's a little bit ludicrous for them to be uh, calling for us to crack down on vaping, which is the most effective tool that mm. we've ever discovered for helping people quit smoking. Mm, but, but, I mean, vaping isn't without its um, dangers. First, for example, nicotine. Nicotine isn't good for you. And that is the addictive agent within the cigarettes. And there is not enough data to know how bad vaping is actually. And they are saying that vaping could be bad for the heart and lungs. I disagree partially. I think we have plenty of data to know everything we need to know about vaping. It's very easy to conflate tobacco mm. addiction with nicotine addiction. We know that one is much more harmful than the other. Public Health England estimates that smoking traditional cigarettes is about 95% more harmful than smoking electronic cigarettes or vaping. Mm. In terms of cancer risk, um, vaping is about 200 times less likely to give you cancer than smoking is. And so there's no disagreement in the science about the fact that the vaping is always healthier than smoking and people quitting smoking for vaping, which is what we're seeing happen in huge numbers, is absolutely a good thing to be seeing. Well, uh, but then they're equally as addictive. So they both contain the nicotine and in fact in the vape you can get, even get more nicotine in that. Uh, and also they're saying that it could be just as addictive as things like heroin and cocaine. So e-cigarettes, e e whilst you know they are better than something that's very bad for you, they're still not good. I think that if we were to crack down on vaping, which is what the World Health Organization is mm. pushing for very hard, it would send completely the wrong signal to um, lots and lots of smokers out there who want to quit um, because we're telling them they, we're taking away the resources that they need in order to be able to quit smoking. As I said, vaping is always healthier than smoking, so we should be doing everything we can to help people to quit smoking, and vaping is, is very much part of that. We've got this strange dynamic going on um, with academics and with the state where you kind of have this exclusion of industry knowledge and of the science. The Society for, um, it's called the Society for Research of Nicotine and Tobacco recently banned tobacco industry representatives from attending its conference. That's completely the last thing uh, we should be doing. We, we've seen over the last 18 months the ways that the private sector can help um, people, you know, companies making hand sanitizer, donating PPE. There was a bank in Sweden who forewent a lot of their mm -hmm. bureaucracy and paperwork in order to expedite the del delivery of ventilators. When you have a public health outcome that we can all agree is a good thing, in the case of COVID, that might be getting ventilators where they're needed on time. In the case of smoking, it might be helping people who want to quit to be able to quit. When we've got those things that we all agree are good, we should be pooling our resources and doing everything we can to make that happen and to make that possible. Mm. And I think that banning uh, vaping or cracking down on vaping is, is the opposite of that. It's, it's, uh, and in addition to that, it would push people to the illegal market. So at the moment, uh, if you want to vape, you can buy from a, a licensed oh, but, vendor. But no, the, vape, uh, the vape juices and things, they're not really regulated, are they? There's no real proper regulation with them. So whilst the nicotine, you've got levels of nicotine in them, there's no one really regulating to make sure that other chemicals aren't in those, those juices. I, I don't agree at all. We see these stories about... Um, but they're not, I'll, are they? I mean, whether you agree or not, I mean, are they regulated? Well, there are lots of types of vapes that are illegal because they are particularly dangerous. But, but they're not talking... really regulated. There might be some, but nobody's really checking and checking that they're OK. So even though uh, cigarettes are bad for you, they are regulated in some respect. It's not great. Uh, but vaping is still dangerous. It could be still dangerous. It could. It is addictive. And you're still you're potentially bringing in a new generation of people who are addicted to nicotine. So well, you've got them off one thing, you've put them on another, which could later on, we could discover, have very bad, bad side effects. 
there, there's no evidence at all that well, bans... We, or... we thought smoking was good years ago. Remember? That's very true. Exactly. Yeah. So it could be the same thing with the vape. And we have more, more science and more innovation now, which tells us all the ways that we can escape the harms that, that smoking causes. And that's what I think we should be doing. And even if vaping was bad for you, I don't think a ban is the way to go. We've seen countless examples of sales bans that just don't work. Lots of children between the age of 11 and 15 have actually smoked in this country, even though it's uh, legal for them yeah, to I buy did, I didn't cigarettes. Well, it's true, but listen, we're running out of time. It's really good to talk to you. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Excellent. That was, of course, Jason Reid talking about the whole new thing about vape. Now, after the break, we'll